across Australia, the wheels of industry turn 24 hours a day, seven days a week. These machines are tough, and the teams of people running them are even tougher. From deep underground to high in the sky, these heavy metal marvels are essential to our daily lives. But what happens when these massive machines break down? Teams of mechanics, engineers, fitters and boilermakers step up to battle against tight deadlines in some of the harshest working environments on the planet. Doing the vital repair work to keep these heavy metal wonders of industry alive. On this episode of Mega Mechanics, it's a mighty service on a massive scale at the mine shop for workshop foreman Graham Mallet and his team. What we're doing here, we're, it's, it's rebuilds and repairs, major rebuilds and repairs. Spanners are spinning as a team of hard-working mechanics are on a deadline to give these monster trucks a new lease on life. We bring it in, we tear it down to its bare bones and rebuild it from the floor up. And in heavy maintenance hangar number three, senior licensed aircraft maintenance engineer Charles Lucina oversees an Airbus A330 undercarriage check. It's a very important part of the aircraft. It takes roughly on touchdown probably about half the load of the aircraft. A challenging installation on a critical landing gear part hinges on a thread to stay on schedule. The old nut goes fine onto the old pintle pin, but won't go onto the new pintle pin, so we're not sure why. A mighty maintenance job on the bucket wheel reclaimer at Port Waratah Coal Services can also mean mega danger for Cannon Ford and the team. The worst case that could happen would probably be if the bucket just fell. The crew will need to dig deep to get this giant bucket wheel spinning again. Massive. <laughs> um, it's pretty much an apartment building. When you see it, it's really hard to describe the actual size of it. And heavy machinery blocking an access road at the New Ackland Coal Preparation Plant has brought operations to a standstill for maintenance improvement supervisor Andy Schooler. So the machine behind me, the Manitou Telescopic Handler, has broken down. It's all hands on deck as Operation Manitou Move gets underway. There's lots of little sensors in there and we probably damaged and cut some cables when they failed. 950 kilometres north of the Queensland capital city of Brisbane is the central seaside city of Mackay. Built on sugarcane but boomed with the mining industry, Mackay is the seaport gateway to the Bowen Basin, the single largest coal reserve in Australia. And it's on these mine sites you'll find hard-working, super-sized trucks, dozers, loaders and lifters. These mighty machines have thousands of moving parts operating 24-7 and need an army of mega mechanics to maintain them. Hastings Deering Mackay has troops at the ready to supply and service a staggering fleet of caterpillar machinery for both surface and below-ground mining. What we're doing here, we're, it's, it's rebuilds and repairs, major rebuilds and repairs, the things you can't do on site, the, the bigger jobs, the multi-million dollar jobs. Graham Mallet leads a team of more than 120 staff in the maintenance workshop known as the Mine Shop. Here, their specialty is the Caterpillar 793 mining truck. Standing at six and a half metres tall and almost 14 metres long, the CAT 793 can carry a payload of over 200 tonnes. Off the factory floor, a 793 is worth around $4 million. But fully reconditioned, the truck costs about $2.4 million with parts and labour. The team are in the process of stripping, reconditioning and overhauling the entire truck. And today, the engine has to come out for replacement. You want to let the guys know about those final drives? Yeah, mate. Let's fuck this. It's a big job worth big dollars. The C-175 engine has 16 cylinders and weighs over 12 tonnes. The engine replacement is worth $700,000 alone. And it will take a team of two fitters working intensive 12-hour shifts 
four days to complete the engine refit. And that's only part of the work required to get this truck back in the mine and earning its keep. There's an awful lot of money in what these machines do. To pull a tonne of coal out the ground costs maybe $140. These machines can carry close to 200 tonne on the back of them. So after a year of work and you soon make your money back. After a downturn in the region's mining sector, coal production reduced and maintenance schedules were being held off. But now that's changing and work is back on. They pretty much work 24-7 out on site. Um, with that, they obviously do an awful lot of hours. Typically around that sort of 20 to 24,000 hours, that's when we're starting to see them come in here for these rebuilds. Over the past 18 months, the demand for quality coal has increased internationally. Mines have rapidly picked up production, putting the trucks back into demanding, round-the-clock operations. As a result, the mine shop is seeing an unprecedented number of service and maintenance requests. Graham has his work cut out for him to keep it all on schedule and relies on his team. So a couple of guys working on this one uh, today, we've got one guy, he's been with us an awful long time, he's got close to 30 years experience working on these machines. Ian Selby started out as a field fitter in the early 80s. After years on location in the mines, he's gained a vast amount of experience. Yeah, 34 years, I've seen a lot of changes in that time. We've seen gone from purely mechanical engines to the electronic engines of today. No, not you know, you gradually watch the machines become bigger and bigger, and after a while, you don't even you don't even notice. You know. A lot of the guys that work for us, they come for an apprenticeship, but a lot of the real knowledge is passed from person to person, from from the older generation to the new guys coming through. But then also it runs the other way with the younger guys. They're they're more they're more hot on the digital aspect of the machines now. You know, and they're teaching some of the older guys stuff as well. With all this knowledge changing hands, there's one thing that can't be changed, and that's delivery deadlines. We pride ourselves on, on actually a quite fast turnaround for the industry. Um, we can take a 793 and turn that around in 30 days. Um, that's down from sort of a standard of maybe seven weeks. It's a lot of pressure, but we've got the right team. And there's a lot involved, transport costs, police organised for escorts. So if they say 28 day turnaround, it means 28 day turnaround. Putting Graham under immense pressure to coordinate a busy workshop with up to six rebuilds happening at the same time. We get a machine that's maybe done four years worth of work out on site and it's really in need of a, of a good birthday. So we, we bring it in, we tear it down to its bare bones and rebuild it from the floor up. The strip down, service and refurbishment of each truck involves 5,000 individual parts. Until you hit the key, you are kind of on edge. I mean, it, it, the guys are constantly checking, like I'm constantly checking. There's always that chance something not quite plumbed up right, not quite connected right. And yeah, you just might turn the key and get nothing. With so many trucks on the workshop floor and deadlines that need to be met, will the team piece this beast back together on time? In Queensland's capital city, Brisbane, the airport is connected to more than 54 destinations worldwide and in excess of 17 million passengers fly in and out every year. But today, planes are being grounded. For maintenance, that is. Just east of the runway, the 28 metre tall doors are being opened at heavy maintenance hangar number three. This specialised facility is due to welcome an A330 Airbus for a landing gear check-in service. In the air, these planes can reach speeds of up to 900 kilometres per hour. But on the ground, it's a much more cautious pace. A jet blast from the engines could cause extensive damage and injury. So for the safety of people and equipment, the jets are switched off and a tug is used to bring the 187-ton aircraft to the hangar. Aircraft checks are required at specified flight hours. 
and today this Airbus is grounded for essential landing gear maintenance. The key job for today is the replacement of a pintle pin, basically a large hinge pin which attaches the landing gear to the aircraft structure. It's a component that absorbs and disperses the high stresses during landing and maintenance is essential. But before this A330 can roll into the hangar, licensed aircraft maintenance engineer Mick Little and his crew have work to do. We just do a, a, a whole series of checks, airframe and also avionic checks. We really want to test the plane when it's nice and alive. We'll start pulling some ducting, uh, some panels apart to do some leak checking. We'll spin engines it's just to make sure everything's operating properly. Also with our flight controls, we'll turn off and on some computers. Under the plane's belly, Anthony Barker is one of many young tradesmen paying his dues, removing hundreds of panel screws. As we take the panels off, we always inspect them as well, make sure they're all in good condition. This is a job they like giving the first and second year apprentices. It might be grounded, but there are still plenty of safety concerns in and around the Airbus. People coming up and down the stairs, walking around the engines and so forth, even with spinning, even with noise. The job might have just started, but time is on everyone's mind. Aircraft have flight schedules to keep and passengers to move. We want to get it into the hangar as fast as we can. But before the landing gear maintenance can get underway inside the hangar, the jet engines need to go for a test spin on the tarmac. When we run engines, we want everybody away. We have a, a, you know, a select crew to out there just to do the engine run, so there's no need for everybody to be out there. Finally, it's time for Mick and the team to get this 60 metre wide Airbus towed into the hangar. It's a highly choreographed process to ensure the aircraft is lined up precisely. A thumbs up signals the all clear as spotters watch the massive aircraft dock into position. With wheel chocks in place, these large aircraft jacks are rolled out onto the hangar floor. Slowly raising the jacks, the team prepare to support the A330 under each wing. We've got to jack it all nice and level, and we use the plane's computer for that. And finally, the docks are moved into position. With the Airbus docked and raised to service the landing gear, getting the wheels to touch down on this job is about to screech to a halt. 160 kilometres north of the state capital of Sydney is the Port of Newcastle, the busiest coal export terminal on the east coast of Australia and the location of Port Waratah Coal Services, the largest coal export facility in the world. Each year, over 20,000 heavy haulage trains travel up to 450 kilometres from coal mines across the region to unload at Kooragang Terminal. The coal-laden landscape is a sea of black and yellow, dominated by huge metal monsters. The task assignment today is a bucket change on Bucket Wheel Reclaimer 412. This heavyweight machine tips the scales at 1,200 tonnes and reaches skyward to the height of a 14-storey building. Changing a bucket on one of these giants is a team effort. Managing the maintenance task is Darren Westwood. He's been on the job for 22 years. His workmates call him Booker. It's a nickname for Book of Knowledge. Today's maintenance task is to remove free at bucket. It's been identified as maintenance concerns. It's thinning, so there's a potential cause of failure. The reclaimer's massive bucket wheel weighs in at 30 tonnes and has 10 rotating buckets, each bucket weighing two tonnes. Bucket wear is caused by the reaction of coal against steel. Constant scraping creates friction, causing heat and thinning over time. Regular testing of metal surfaces is undertaken to measure thickness and identify potential cracks. Also on the job today is Cannon Ford, 
a former apprentice at Port Waratah Coal Services, now working for the company. So this is what gets ultrasonically tested, so it gets the thickness of the steel, so it'll eventually get thinner and thinner and thinner to the point where it cracks, so that would be a breakdown, so that's what we're preventing here. To ensure even bucket wear, the entire bucket is replaced, including the teeth. So the teeth at the front here, you can tell normally this would be a sharp jagged edge when they're new. So these are high strength steel, so they're very hard wearing. So when these start to wear, such as this one here, as you can tell it's worn, then you know that teeth's worn, the bucket's been digging pretty hard. To get the job underway, Booker needs to make some calculations. We'll go over and pick a, a new bucket up and uh, weigh it. We'll weigh that with the crane scales and then we'll bring it across here and then we'll attach the old bucket because then we know the weight of the, the new bucket so we know with the re resisting weight that we can take. With his calculations set, the team prepare the bucket for removal. The bucket is held by a steel pin on each side. These are the major pins that hold most of the weight. Uh, they've normally got a wedge in them, but we've taken that wedge out because we we're ready for the crane. So that pin takes pretty much all of the weight of the actual bucket, and when it's digging, that will take most of the weight that comes on the front lip. Working with these machines for many years, this is where Booker's knowledge really counts. Depending on pin uh, condition, so if we have a stuck pin, this could take uh, three or four hours. Running on a prevention rather than cure basis, scheduled maintenance on the reclaimer bucket wheel is carefully planned. But it looks like the team have literally hit their first problem. Could Booker's prediction of a stuck pin be about to come true? 10 kilometres north of Oakey in regional Queensland is the New Ackland coal mine, a mining company which takes pride in rehabilitation. Since open cut operations began in 2002, the New Ackland coal mine has continuously rehabilitated 500 hectares of grazing land, with mining operations and agriculture working side by side. Today, the annual maintenance shutdown of the coal handling and preparation plant is underway. This five-storey structure washes, braids and sorts the raw material that comes out of the ground, separating the coal for export and the fill to go back into the rehabilitated land. An army of mechanical fitters and boilermakers are working around the clock to repair, refurbish and replace hundreds of pieces of equipment. It's the perfect partnership of mechanic and machine until a major breakdown brings the worksite to a standstill. It's news maintenance improvement coordinator Andy Schooler doesn't need right now. So the machine behind me, the Manitou telescopic handler, has broken down in the middle of working on feeder breaker 101 job. A telescopic handler, otherwise known as a telehandler, is a multi-purpose machine using a telescopic boom arm. It has the capability of a crane and the manoeuvrability of a forklift to move loads across rough terrain. Rob O'Brien was operating the machine when he realised he had a problem with the telescopic boom arm. When I was pulling it in, I found that it, it, it went a little bit tight, made a, made a noise, we went round the back and had a look, thought, oh my goodness, not good. Hose carriage in the actual telescopic part of the boom had come loose and it virtually punched it out the back. It, it, just all the hydraulic lines and that, it's like spaghetti in the back of the machine. The issue is not only that it's broken down and inoperable, the machine is also blocking access to the worksite. Right in the road, it couldn't have been in a worse spot, really. Now, with a serious breakdown on his hands. First thing we can do is like, I call the supervisor, let him have a look and, and see what it, his thoughts are. With news of the breakdown, Andy's quickly on site to assess the damaged machine. It's a fairly major breakdown, needs some fairly big repairs done on it. So um, we're not going to get it going in half an hour which means the maintenance job Rob's working on has come to a standstill. The transmission senses that the jacks are down, so obviously we can't go forward, can't go back. It won't let the transmission engage anyway. With the machine unable to move, Andy needs a plan to get this stubborn troublemaker out of the way before there's a Manitou meltdown. Around the clock, the world's airports are incredibly busy places not just in the terminals or out on the runways. 
The hangars in Brisbane specialise in heavy maintenance. Jobs like landing gear changes or extensive safety checks that can take weeks to complete. Yesterday, Hangar 3 was buzzing with the arrival of an A330. Today, it's just one of many aircraft worked on by various teams inside and out. These gigantic hangars are dedicated to keeping the flying kangaroos running safely and smoothly under the leadership of Paul Crawford. We have uh, two main facilities, so Hangar 3, where we are today, which uh, houses our wide body aircraft, where we can have between uh, three and four wide body aircraft under maintenance at any one time and uh, Hangar 2 where we have our narrow body aircraft, again up to four aircraft. So across the facility we can have eight aircraft undergoing heavy maintenance uh, at any one time, utilising our staff from our apprenticeship program all the way through to our uh, licensed aircraft maintenance engineers who uh, themselves can have up to 40 years plus experience. Under the belly of this Airbus, Ian Spencer, one of the many lamies or licensed aircraft maintenance engineers is unpacking a pintle pin destined for the landing gear. Yeah, well, it's probably only 40, yeah. Before the real heavy lifting starts, the greaser plug needs to be inserted. We're going to install this into the into here first before we put the pin up just for access. And uh, so we're just organising the, the right greases and everything at the moment. We're trying to find the get all the nuts and uh, everything ready. In about five or ten minutes, we should be uh, ready to go. Basically a large hinge pin, a pintle pin is one of the vital components of the aircraft's landing gear. Before commencing the replacement, Ian inspects the pin removed from the aircraft. The chrome's gone a little bit. I think we're just going to replace it because it might be damaged that you can't see. With the new pin prepped, it's time for the team to harness up and take a ride in the elevated work platform. Down below, the team make minor adjustments to the gear install stand to carefully manoeuvre Ian into the best position. OK, hold it there. This is where they're aiming for. And a heavy part and cramped conditions are creating a challenge. Yeah, we, we, can, we can push it in and then turn it in there. The big pin's all, all good. It's just this uh, eccentric. But there's a smaller part not lining up. Ian and the team need to work out what's stopping this puzzle coming together and how to fix it. This ball here seems to be wider than the than what's the what's come with the new fitting. Ian compares the old fitting with the new unit as he and the team try and solve the mystery of why it won't fit. Meanwhile, in another section of Hangar 3, a tug is busy pushing a Jetstar A320 onto aircraft scales. Modifications have been made to this aircraft's interior and a reway is standard procedure. So because we've vaulted essentially the inside of the aeroplane, they need to know if the weight and balance has changed and if the centre of gravity of the aircraft's changed for in-flight in, in characteristics. We've pushed the aircraft onto the scales and off the scales twice to get an average. A weight and balance officer certified by the Civil Aviation Safety Authority oversees the procedure. So he is the one that signs off on the readings on the scales and works out the centre of gravity. When he's happy, that's when we're happy. Happiness is not something being experienced by Ian and his co-workers at the moment, while they continue their efforts to install the new pintle pin. It seems the locking pin is creating an issue and a bore gauge shows the bearings are slightly smaller than the old one. Team leader Charles Lucina lends a hand, troubleshooting. We had to remove the pintle pin, pin again and now we're going to have to hone out the, uh, the bushings in the pintle pin, pin so the lock pin can go in. And for that we have to take it out, take it into the uh, fitting shop and the fitters have got uh, specialised equipment to hone out the bore. A few minutes in the hands of an experienced machinist and... Yeah. Will the pin make the grade this time? Something that does seem to be measuring up is the A320. It's a tick of approval from the CASA certified weight and balance officer as this heavy weight rolls off the scales. Good news here, but not back in the wheel well. 
a nut required to secure the pintle pin is now causing some problems. I should check this nut right on, on the bench. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's back into problem-solving mode again for Ian and the team. But finicky parts are nothing new to these seasoned engineers. Back at the Mackay Mine Shop, the maintenance team is in the thick of a 28-day rebuild on a CAT 793. A 2,000 horsepower beast of a truck, barely recognisable without its supersized wheels and huge 200-ton tipping tray. One of the biggest challenges with the jobs being so big is doing six or seven of them at a time. A 793 mine truck has over 5,000 individual working components. Awful lot of people to manage and awful lot of parts to receive. And like any mechanical service centre, it all comes down to parts being on hand the moment you need them. Mark Farmer is warehouse operations supervisor of the Mackay Parts Warehouse and a handyman to know when you need to find a part. Anything from a small O-ring up to a large engine um, that can weigh up to 18 tonne and be valued at nearly half a million dollars. So very, very diverse type of parts and um, with those come their own unique challenges. The warehouse holds up to 62,000 parts. The team here are called on around the clock to supply the on-site maintenance workshop and customers around the country. Yeah, lots of activity, lots of moving parts, um, lots of people moving with, with some urgency to get those parts out on time. And if you see a red tub, that means stop everything and give it right of way. This is for the high priority urgent order. It's extremely important that jobs in the workshop aren't delayed waiting for parts. We have 24-7 round the clock here and some of our workshops are working into the evenings as well. So it's important for us to service those workshops, make sure those guys are on the spanners trying to hit those promise dates for the customers, stay busy and stay on the spanners. With new parts at the ready, every truck in the workshop is working towards a back-in service date at the mine. It's all about production for our customers. So. Um, the minimum amount of downtime they can have, the better for them. So, yeah, the, the pressure does turn on, definitely. With delivery deadlines looming, keeping the wheels on in the workshop might be Graham's biggest challenge yet. Back in Newcastle, a mega bucket change on a 47 metre high reclaimer is underway. This massive machine scoops up to 9,300 tonnes of coal every hour from stockpiles onto a network of conveyor belts which move coal to the shiploading facilities at the Kuragang Wharf. When he started on the job, Cannon Ford was overwhelmed by the size of the machinery. Uh, massive. <laughs> um, it's pretty much an apartment building when you see it. Uh, it's really hard to describe the actual size of it but to put it in layman's terms is how I explained it to my mum. The teeth from the bottom of the bucket to the top to the bucket wheel there, that's taller than me. And there's 10 of them on the outside of the bucket. And a maintenance job at the very top of the reclaimer would take you up to 14 storeys high. So you're walking up probably 20, 30 stairs just to get to the bottom level. There's a lot more after that as well if you want to go further. <laughs> with the bucket attached to the crane with chains, Booker and his team are ready for the next crucial step the removal of pins holding the two-ton bucket to the giant wheel. Armed with a sledgehammer, the hard labour begins. That's one pin out, another to go. But it's not moving. Could this be the stuck pin problem Booker has encountered before? Not this time, and the pin's out. The two-ton bucket is now fully suspended by the crane. Working with mega machinery also means mega danger, so there are stringent precautions in place. Worst case that could happen would probably be if the bucket just fell um, and somebody got in the way, which we have controls in place to stop that. So the major thing with this is the size and the weight of it and also where the centre of gravity is, so it's quite an awkward thing to try and put on a crane. 
With the bucket safely on the ground, the chains are removed and the crane prepares for the next manoeuvre. Come back out, come under and grab it again underneath and then take it out. While preventative maintenance takes Reclaimer 412 out of service, the consequence of a breakdown due to bucket damage could impact shiploading, delaying departures, running into a costly scenario. Anything that's potentially going to break down, if it's not going to make this maintenance schedule day, we can then pull it out of service, do the quick repair and make sure it's then back in service. But that generally uh, incurs a delay and that's what we don't like to do. With the job at the halfway point, time for some cleanup work in preparation for the new bucket. At the new Ackland Coal Preparation Plant, it's been a disastrous start to the morning. Work has come to a grinding halt with a massive 12-ton machine broken down on the job site. It's a major headache for Andy and Rob, and now adding to their problems is a forecast of heavy rain. But they've taken on the challenge and are determined to find a solution. The telescopic boom operates via a network of sensors, and if the boom is extended, the front stabiliser jacks will be outstretched and the machine will remain solid and unshakable. And it's a safety thing, like if you are lifting a weight and you've got the boom out a reasonable distance, the last thing you want to do is hit a lever and let one of your jacks down a little bit. You could tip the whole thing over. So it's just a fail-safe mechanism. Armed with a trusty screwdriver, Andy probes the damaged sensors, hoping to manually override the stabiliser mechanism. No, nah, mate, probably not going to make any difference there, I'd say. Rob and Andy take on the old adage, if at first you don't succeed, try and try the instruction manual. Armed with some additional knowledge, Andy thinks he might have found the solution. What's that showing now? It's showing the jacks want to come up, but it's locked, so that's where it needs to be. There must be another sensor somewhere. With precious time slipping away, they're desperate to find a solution to raise the stabiliser jacks. And just as forecast, a heavy downpour dampens the mood even further. Every minute equipment is down costs thousands of dollars. And this lost time weighs heavy on Andy's shoulders. When it rains, all the work outside stops can't keep working in the rain when you've got electricity and welders and, and stuff happening. Sort of another hour that we've lost here now. With the rain easing, the boys are back at it, desperate to get this metallic hulk moving. In one last ditch effort, they decide to try and defeat the electrical system. There's lots of little sensors in there and we um, probably damaged and cut some cables when it uh, failed before. Despite all efforts, even resorting to the manual, still no luck. With one mighty obnoxious machine to deal with, the pressure's on Andy to come up with a solution to get the telescopic handler moving. Back in the heavy maintenance hangar, where planes in this world-famous fleet get some industrial-grade care and attention, one job that's been a hard nut to crack has been the installation of a new pintle pin in the landing gear of an Airbus A330. And after finally getting the pin in place, the lameys on duty have hit another problem, this time with the locking nut. If it hits a stop, well, pretty much, like the shred comes to an end or something. Yet again, this troublesome part is delaying the job. Like you said, it just stops. Yeah. Team leader Charles Lesina is on hand to help solve the issue. Well, the problem is the nut that holds this in place, we, we're reusing the old nut. Uh, the old nut goes fine onto the old pintle pin, but won't go onto the new pintle pin, so we're not sure why. The last thing the team needs now is more troubleshooting. Elsewhere in Hangar 3, it's smooth sailing. This landing gear is being prepped for a special voyage. Loose components are being secured to reduce movement in transit and avoid any damage to the hydraulic lines or the landing gear itself. Getting transported overseas on a boat, I have to make sure that um, all the electrical harness is capped properly. 
so that no contaminants get into the end of the plug. Um, and also that all the hydraulic lines are properly blanked and they're not going to leak onto the landing gear. While the landing gear will be travelling by sea, People Power will deliver this door to its final destination. A short walk and the team is all set to reinstall this main landing gear door. When the landing gear is raised, the door is required to safely seal the area and creates smooth airflow. The crew methodically and precisely work through the process. This is the install for this gear door and we are following the install for these mount points right down to the exact torque settings supplied by Airbus, right down to the nearest uh, inch bound. Back with the Pintle pin installation, it's a different story. The team are still working the problem. To keep moving forward, Charles is sourcing new parts, while the team persist using their combined knowledge and experience, searching for a cause and any solution. We've got a choice. We can order out another new Pintle pin, uh, we can order out a new nut, or we can put uh, the old Pintle pin back in. I think what we're doing now, just as a temporary measure, is putting the old pencil pin back in to stabilise the installation of the gear. It's an important decision for Charles, but safety won't be a compromise. This mega machine picks up coal from 65 metre high stacks, loading onto a network of conveyors to a shiploader at the Kooragang Terminal Wharf. Each year, over 1,000 vessels are loaded around the clock. Reclaimer number 412 is an essential part of that shiploading operation. We have a continuous berthing process, so this, uh, this machine could be called 24 hours a day, seven days a week, e except for its scheduled maintenance uh, shutdowns, which is scheduled in an eight-week cycle. This morning, mechanical fitters have removed a bucket showing signs of metal thinning and are now preparing for the installation of a new bucket onto the bucket wheel. With this bucket change, there's a few different ways you could do it, and over the years they've developed the best way to do it, and they've improved the process. A bucket is collected from on-site storage and placed under the bucket wheel. It's disconnected, and the crane hook is guided into position directly above. Attaching the chains, the new bucket is then raised. Booker is ready with the pin and with a technical tap, drives it in. Canon is on standby to slide in the wedge, locking in the pin. One more pin to go and the bucket is almost fully attached. A lot of what we learn here during your apprenticeship is how to do things the way that they've taught the way that they've sort of developed it and you sort of get into that culture of how can we do this better, how can we improve this for next time. Over its 40-year history, the company prides itself on its continuous improvement process, constantly innovating and upgrading all aspects of maintenance. To take notice of the pin over here, uh, it's now hollow. The uh, early additions of those pins are solid, probably about 40 kilos. Now we're down to about 15, so that's a modification that we've done ourselves during time. With the second pin in place and the wedge to lock it in, the job is almost done. Those guys that have been here for 20, 30 years, they've got an infinite amount of experience and knowledge that no textbook or nobody could tell you unless they've had that experience. To finish the job, a wedge on each side secures the bucket in place. The crane releases the load and the job is complete. The new bucket's been put in now, so the pins are in. Uh, as you can tell, we've got different teeth on here. These are used teeth, so they were used on a bucket previously. The wall of the bucket is now really thick. You can hear it when you touch it. Um, this will last for the next cycle. There's no telling how long it will be. It'll probably be 18 months, maybe two years. Even with improved, streamlined processes, working with mega machinery still means hard yakka. 
yeah, it's still it's still get in and just get it done. You know, it's still physical work. It's still hard work, especially if we were doing this like two days ago. It's 40 degrees heat. Doing this in 40 degree heat, changing three or four buckets a day, it does get a bit taxing on the body. Yeah, it's a good environment. It's, a, it's good work, and it's a good, a great bunch of guys to work with. You learn something new every day, which is a great part of the job. And right on schedule, Reclaimer 412 is back in service and on call 24 hours a day, ready to churn its way through mountains of coal. At the new Ackland Coal Preparation Plant, a damaged telescopic handler and heavy downpours have caused major delays. No, there's another sensor there. The decision of what to do lies with maintenance improvement coordinator Andy Schooler, and he doesn't disappoint when he comes up with a simple yet brilliant solution. We'll just lift it out of the way, mate. Yeah, race is done, eh? And just like that, Operation Manitou Move gets underway. We've got to be able to lift it straight onto a truck to take it to be repaired. Just so happens that we have a 100 tonne crane here on site for the four days. It's more than capable of lifting it. It's probably about 12 tonne, the machine itself. Before the lift can proceed, Rob completes a risk management plan to assess the hazards. If there's anything heavy, well, two man or three man lifts, just make sure we help each other out and definitely stand out of the road when the machine is suspended. Have an exclusion zone, which is very important, so anybody around can see, stay clear. The first challenge, raise the stabiliser jacks. Take the load off, yep. um, undo those circuits, pull that pin out, we'll be able to lift them up and chain them up out of the way. Yep. That's the plan. Time for some manual labour. Success with the stabiliser jacks secured out of the way. Next up, rig the load. With the telescopic boom extended, the machine will be front heavy. Finding a balance point takes some trial and error. And finally, liftoff. Operation Manitou Move is officially underway. With the telescopic handler safely secured on the truck, the roadway is clear at last. Realising the lost time the breakdown has caused, Rob knows you can't plan for the unexpected. It's one of those things that happens, you don't like it when it does happen and there's, you always think there could have been ways to prevent it, or, but anyway, that's just how it goes at times, I suppose. Breakdowns are unavoidable, but schedules are not. Making up time is now a priority for Andy. So all in all, we've probably lost about five hours with this on this particular job. By now, the job should be complete. But with the time lost and a need to get back on schedule, the team will be facing a long haul into the night shift. As the 46-ton doors slide open, it's the start of another busy day in Hangar 3 at Brisbane Airport. The first tasks have already been delegated to numerous staff on the maintenance team. Some are relatively simple, like polishing paintwork, or degreasing landing gear in preparation for shipment. Other work assignments can take longer, even more so when parts are being somewhat stubborn. Yesterday, the installation of this $40,000 pintle pin required a lot of teamwork in and around the wheel well. After troubleshooting by both shifts, the part is finally locked in place. The problem with an ill-fitting nut was rectified by inspecting and intricately cleaning the pintle pin thread. It's a very important part of the aircraft. It takes roughly on touchdown probably about half the load of the aircraft. That's around 90 tonnes of the aircraft's weight. It's an incredibly important component that needed to be changed. It's teamwork that ensures these enormous aircraft are well maintained and safely back in the air on schedule. But just because the pin is in, doesn't mean it gets a passing grade. 
A retraction test, also known as a gear swing, must be performed. It's one of the final checks where new and overhauled landing gear has been fitted. With the engineering crew in communication with the team on the flight deck, everyone is on standby for an instruction to move the landing gear lever on the engineer's call. You right? You right? Hydraulics! A gear swing retraction test takes an hour and a half to complete. And during that time, the landing gear will be put through its paces up to six times. It's thumbs up as the new Pintle Pin passes the vital swing test. An impressive end to another busy day inside this massive hangar. Back at the mine shop in Mackay, a recent upswing in the mining sector has led to unprecedented demand for rebuilds on these heavy lifters. Seeing overworked old machines get a new lease on life is something Graham is proud of. It's a good feeling when we get a machine and it's, it's even when it's getting close to the end and we're putting them final touches on, giving it a little bit of a spray paint and putting them, them stickers on at the end, it really, you do, you do get a sense of achievement. The 793 trucks have two front wheels and four on the rear, an inner and outer wheel. One of the final stages is refitting the wheels for delivery of the rebuilt truck back to the mine site. Each one has to be buffed and cleaned before going back on the truck. Using an overhead crane, slinging the huge three and a half metre diameter wheel into position is a slow procedure. The tyre weighs in at almost 4,000 kilograms. That's 570 times the weight of a standard car tyre. It's a slow and careful process, lining up multiple bolt holes. A lot of customers always say to us, if the machine looks good, the guys do look after it. By the time a CAT 793 is ready to go back to the mine, it's taken a 100-man team working 28 days of round-the-clock shifts. We pretty much receive a machine every week and send a machine every week, so it's yeah, a lot of anxiety, but a lot of reward comes with it. And as soon as one truck rolls out, another is already being stripped down bolt by bolt to start the entire rebuild process all over again.